Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Da 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 da. What is happening, my blessed fans, my blessed reactors? Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Ooh, I love that movie. It was a dog on great flick. Ah. Okay, short story start. Let's get this review going through. So, and yes, it's a spoiler review. So, if you've seen a movie and you want to be spoiled, that's good. You can stay here, remain here. But if you don't want to be spoiled, I suggest you should leave right now. And if you do want to be spoiled and you don't care about the film, hey, it's cool with me. <laughs> it ain't my brain, ain't my mind. I already saw the flick, so uh, yeah. I'm going to tell you all about it. So, as I'm sitting in theaters, the logo, Lucasfilm, comes on. And then, a long time ago in the galaxy, far, far away. My heart was like... Uh, it was nostalgic all over again for me as a Star Wars fan. And the fact how, the way how the um, the premise is, the logo thing was, you know, how it was starting. Luke is missing. General Solo, which is Organa Leia, is looking for her brother so that they can restore peace around the galaxy because there's a new evil organization called the First Order, a.k.a. Empire 4.0. Okay. The way how this movie started, as the original, any original Star Wars movie should start, is, is um, it kind of reminded me of how A New Hope started it. Like, there was like a one ship came in, there's a big triangular ship that just keep going and going and going. This one was over the planet of Jakku, and the big triangular ship is just like, it's like a big giant shadow looming over the, film, over the uh, planet. And then here come these little cargo carriers, which carry the stormtroopers. And the stormtroopers are coming down there, and they're going to mean business on Jakku. But why are they traveling to Jakku? So, they're coming onto this planet, and all we know is that Leia has sent out her secret, you know, secret special um, resistant agent to look for Luke. And that resistant agent is Poe Dameron. So, these, and she, and Poe Dameron speaking to, um, I forgot his name, but the old guy about a map of where the location of Luke Skywalker is, including BB-8, which he gave, um, which Poe Dameron gave to BB-8 as a map to be hidden in secret. So the First Order comes down, they're storming, and they're just killing up everybody, all the whole villages and everything. And um, the stormtroopers, I gotta say, were really threatening this time around. And they actually just shot people. Pew, pew, ah, pew! And flamethrowing them, too, and everything. And they were just... Pew, 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 pew. Just hear the sound effects. It's just... Ooh, it's just the chills. Um, and then uh, and Poe was trying to get away from Stormtroopers. He and BB-8, but the Stormtroopers shot his X-Wing um, engines in the back, so he couldn't get away. And now, this is when the commander... He is one of my favorite new Star Wars villains now. Kylo Ren has shown up into battle and he is talking with Poe and he's a asking Poe where's Skywalker? Poe's like um <laughs> Poe po had it had like a low he was a great character he had a lot of great sense of humor too and everything he's I forgot what he said but he's like do I talk do you talk first or do you want me to talk first and 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 Kylo Ren said, okay, smart behind, we'll see. So um, they took Poe hostages and everything. So Kylo Ren is like uh, looking for Luke Skywalker too and everything to, uh, to eliminate and eradicate the last Jedi. So um, afterwards, then there's a, a shot in the beginning of the movie where um, there's a stormtrooper that looks very puzzled and like he's seen so much like he don't want to join it. And we can all guess and yes, that is Finn. John Boyega. John Boyega, you did an amazing job. I am real proud of you, brother. Represent, man. Yeah. Um, I love the Finn. I love all the characters in this movie. Finn, Rey, uh, and and them. They weren't stiff. They weren't stale. They were very relatable characters. Like, see how me, like, you talk to a relatable person, like, you, you're an average person every day, and you love that person, like that person? That's how they were to us as a connection towards the audience. Well, personally, for me, um, Finn's character 
all these characters past, I'm gonna start with Finn's first. Well, Finn's past is like very like mysterious, like you know, because all his name that he only remember is that his stormtrooper name F one zero three, whatever they call them, and stuff like that. But he sees the devastation of these of how the First Order is acting. He says, "Okay, you know what? I'm done. That's it. No more. I don't want to be in the First Order no more." And he sees Poe um, Dameron of you know how Kylo Ren is kind of torturing him, and and um, Finn is um you know have Poe Dameron hostage and everything and he says you know what hey Poe um me and you are gonna break out we go to, I'm against the first order and stuff like that and their relationship bond how I really loved came just like it wasn't forced it was just the perfect moment it was just like all right so your name is so and so I'm Poe so you gonna help me break out thanks buddy I mean you pals man all right let's get to these tie first and let's get out of here and um so they, they got out and they escaped. They got badly damaged, of course, in the TIE Fighter. And um, they crash landed into the um, uh, Jakku thing. And what I loved um, about it is um, Finn, then his name, John Bioga's character, Finn's not, name is not originally Finn. Poe Dameron named him Finn. He's asking him, hello, sir, what's your name? My name is F1 O Zero Fine, something like that. And Poe Dameron was like, F1, that's too much for me to remember. Um, I'll call you Finn. Finn. Yeah, Finn. Finn is a great name. <laughs> Finn's character was great too. He his his character was very funny too. So he crash landed in Jakku, and that's how Finn um, got to know Ray. Um, you know, they came together like you saw in the trailers and everything. Now Ray's character is another phenomenal woman that's been presented as a female. It came off accident. As a female Star Wars uh, character, you know. Now, Ray's character is very uh, mysterious. All, the, all these characters' past are very mysterious. I love that in a Star Wars flick, and I like it about this. Um, then she meets BB-8, then she meets up with Finn, and then Finn says, Okay, you know what, dear, these guys are first order, they're coming after us. Well, mostly me and you, because they know something like Luke Skywalker's information. And Ray, before I get into their adventures, what I love about how they did with these characters in this film is that these characters have no sense of like Ray's character for example like she's been on this planet for a long time it's dry and desert I'm just here I'm just living I'm just living for life and purpose and reason I'm just I'm just here to live I'm just a scavenger you know I don't have no reason I love movies like that because people it, it relates to real life situations people who don't have none to live or feel like their life is worthless their lives really mean something and the way how they did with Ray, you know, and in and, and the future, Ray and Finn's lives mean something because in the future, they're going to explore a galaxy that's way beyond it. So that's especially for future reference for you guys, too. Like, there's hope and victory for you guys. All you got to do is just believe and it's going to be a miracle for you guys in the future. Um, okay, so afterwards, when Finn, my favorite part in the film is that when Finn and Ray are running from the TIE Fighters that's coming after them, and everything and BBA they were chasing after too. Um when Finn was like saying, um we need a pilot. We we need somebody to fly. Ray said, I can fly that ship. And Finn's like, wait, what about that junk ship right there? Ray Ray said, No, that's junk ship. That's the we don't need that ship. So they go into that ship and the Typhar shot the ship that they were going to. And Ray says, Okay, you know what? Let's go to the junk ship. And you know what junk ship it really was? This baby right here. When I saw it, I loved how they did that. And the camera just panned over, like, the music nostalgic. I was like, yes, yes. That's just not one just one piece of junk. This is the Millennium Falcon history, baby. But the way how Ray was flying the ship, too, was really amazing. And the way how the ship was maneuvering and drifting and stuff like that, it was it was just crazy. And they were shooting and everything and going in. And she was driving that bad boy. I mean, she was kind of crashing it in a way, but she had that bad boy stirred up. And the way how the visuals of this film is shot beautifully. So afterwards, when Ray and them got away from the um, TIE fighters and stuff like that, they come... And they get caught in this little, um, like this little um, cargo thing, and they meet up with the two historical characters, Chewie, Rome, Han Solo, and Chewbacca. Another nostalgic moment that I had to clap in the theaters for. Um, and I and I love the way how they betray the Rebel Alliance characters as myths. Like you said, you guys are not real. And then when he says his name, Solo, and she's like, Holy cow! You're Han Solo. I used to be, kid. 
But I, I love that to make them feel like they were like a mix of stories, like because they're the new generations. Like they don't, they never, they thought they were just make believe and stuff like that. But and Luke Skywalker did the same thing to it, too. Excuse me, did the same thing to him too. So I love that. And um, what else was was great in the film? Oh, now let's get to the villains. Kylo Ren. I loved Kylo Ren. He is such an awesome bad guy. And the thing that shocked me is that Kylo Ren is the son of Han and Leia. And I was like, mm, interesting. And what I loved how they did with Kylo Ren is, is that he's not like just one of them bad guys. Like, he just got a mask on. He's just like one dimensional, you know, like one dimensional character. He's just like, oh, um, yeah, I'm this tough guy. And yeah, we do as I say and stuff like that. Um, they made him... This, his villainous character very relatable. Like you could feel his emotions, you could feel his sense of of, of um, his dark side, why he's doing this, and he idolizes Darth Vader, which is his Grandpa Skywalker, Grandpa Vader. He idolizes Grandpa because he wants to be like his grandfather. He wants to embrace the dark side because. Um, Luke Skywalker had him trained when he was uh, as a little boy, wanted to grow up to be a Jedi and stuff like that. But he wouldn't be as great as as his dad, if I'm getting it right. I have to see it again. But if I'm getting it right, um, but he feels that he Kylo Ren felt like he was too weak to be on the light side. Like the white side is like the light side is like ah, the dark side is like much more better and stuff like that. Like he tries his best to be on the dark side. His character was great. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. Like, even when he took off the mask. Um, he's a human, of course, and Adam Driver did an amazing job with the facial expressions and emotions as Kylo Ren. Like, you could really feel his, his, um, his character. Another villain that I'm kind of disappointed of is, uh, Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma, she was like, and what? She looked this, I hate, like, when they make a villain so awesome... But they're just in the film like about three scenes in the film because she didn't do nothing. She, oh, it was very cool that she's a female bad guy. I wanted her to do more. Uh, I, I wanted to do like just shoot up stuff or do something that's amazing. But she was just halfway just there in the character, and I was kind of disappointed. Like they could have did more. She might be in the next one, but instead of the trash compactor and the Star Killer Blaze blew up. I don't know, but. I, but they kind of slicked that out. But they could have did more of her character, you know. And she was, she was, she was just passable. Who else? General Hux was great too, you know. He was, he was like one of them, uh, them admirals, like you know, like Darth Vader used to do, bully Captain P at and all them back then and stuff like that. Um, Snook, I, this guy was very gigantic. I was like, yo, he is big. But um, if he was really just a hologram, of course. You know, but he did look kind of intimidating. But Kylo Ren looked the most intimidating to me. The Snook looked like a, a pale, like he was pale face. He got like epic scars. And, he, and it seems like he lived through it like a thousand years. It's like, oh, okay, now I'm going to find out more about this guy in episodes 8 or 9. Remember how they going to do him. Um, what else was great? Oh, the action in this movie. Good God almighty, it was great. Um, the dog fights and everything was great. And the visuals, stunning. The camera work, how J.J. did it, it's stunning. It's, it, it, it was like a fan's made dream come true. Now, my favorite parts of Star Wars is, of course, the lightsaber battles. And they did this very well. I heard that there were speculations that certain people um, wished that there was more lightsaber fights. You know, and uh, I was like, yeah, okay, but if you remember the original trilogy... Um, there's usually like one lightsaber battle, like okay, the one life like, that the lightsaber battles and numerous trilogies, the trilogy is like say okay, if you're ready to take me down, let's get this bad boy, let's do it. Uh, like a four, five, and six, Obi Wan fought Darth Vader one time in the movie. Luke Skywalker faces Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi faces Luke faces Darth Vader. One fight scene. I loved how they did this, and I thought Finn was gonna be the Jedi, but um. He really wasn't. I mean, he handled the lightsaber, turned on. I mean, he was just whacking them, but he wasn't full potential Jedi. But the Jedi is really Rey. And I love the part how she just uh, mind-tricked the uh, <laughs> the Stormtrooper. And you may drop your gun, too. I will drop my gun, too. Phew! I was like, oh. 
and I'm having a feeling, can she be relatable to Luke Skywalker? Um, the lightsaber battles, Kylo Ren versus Rey. No, no, Kylo Ren first was Kylo Ren versus Finn. And he said, you want the lightsaber? You take it. And, Finn, and, and uh, uh, Kylo Ren was like saying, that weapon is mine. That's my grandpa's. He's like, all right, come on, take it. And they were slashing it. And were, Finn was battling too. But he, he was just, he wasn't like ready because Finn got like hit by many blows and everything. He got hit by his shoulder and his spine and everything. It, it, it was just crazy. But when Ray got a hold of it, what I love about how they did, and Ray was fighting Kylo Ren too, and it was a blast and phenomenal. What I love how they did with this lightsaber fights, it wasn't choreographed it, how the um, Prime and the Jedi's were and Sith back then. It was like, they were just getting there, like they just trying to get to your body part, like get to the point, just let me hack and slash you and everything. And, and Ray, Ah, yes, Kylo Ren is still alive, of course. Thank God, because I, I didn't want them to Darth Maul them in the first part of the movie. He got he got beat up. And the thing that I love about the lightsaber fight was when Kylo Ren was fighting, because Chewbacca shot him on the side, and Kylo Ren was like, <clears throat> like, come on, Kylo, come on, <clears throat> come on, Kylo, you could do this, baby. Yeah. The thing that made me cry, because my camera bad memory is about to go out in two minutes. Um, the thing that made me cry, Chris. Han Solo died!